Okay, this is going to be the video of assembling the case. I'm going to go ahead and start my other camera here. Even though I'm not assembling anything right this second. Okay, the case consists of four main pieces and then a couple small pieces. This is the back cover, which I have personalized for me. Uh, and then there is the face plate. This is the top. This is the Flukum logo name, whatever you want to call it, the name plate that fits into this. Then you've got the middle piece and then the bottom piece. This is the USB cover. The USB. And this is the SD card uh, tray. So uh, you're going to need, if you want to use inserts, which I highly recommend, these are M4 by 4.7 millimeter. These four will go into the holes here, these four holes here, and that'll be for your 75 by 75 millimeter visa mount, if you so choose. Then you're going to have four three millimeter by four millimeter uh, inserts for the middle piece. And then I have some, and I, I recommend using that size for everything, but I have some 4.7 by 5.6, which are long, a little bit longer. That will work in this, the, the top piece and the bottom piece. But uh, I'm just going to use those till they're gone. And then if you're going to do this, then I would recommend getting a dedicated tool for doing the inserts. Uh, which if you buy like a kit with these inserts in it, a lot of them will come with this already. This is going to make your life easier. Basically it's going to go into the soldering iron. So let's go ahead and insert that now. So it's pretty simple. You just take this, unscrew this. Slide that off, slide that off. Put the new tool on. And then just screw it back together. And then now you're ready to go. Fire up the iron. I just run it at the normal temperature that I run for doing soldering and go from there. Okay, so what I do, as I've shown in a previous video, is when I do the inserts, I don't put them all the way down. I put them uh, just slightly above and then use something flat. In this case, I'm going to be, since these are smaller than the previous video, I'm going to be using just this uh, chip extraction tool just to kind of flatten them out. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, it doesn't have to be level, but it makes life a little easier. And the, the holes here are designed so that these just rarely sit in there. So that they go in perfectly every time. It's better to not push them all the way in than to push them too far in. And you need to be extremely careful because, <clears throat> at least with the with the the M3, the short M3s, it heats up very quickly and it melts very quickly. These these are a little more forgiving. So you just uh, down a little bit, not quite all the way in, it's still going to be super hot, and then it's flush like that. <clears throat> if you can push them in flush first time, then great. Uh, I've had a few that are, were kind of cockeyed and figured this was a better approach. that one a little further down than I want it to but 
so be it. Didn't go too far. If you push it too far through these pieces, then they will come out the other side. But you'd have to push it down a significant distance. And they are still warm to the touch, so be careful on that. Okay, so that's those four. And set that piece aside. And then we take this one, we flip it over. The ones that have insets like that, those are for regular screws. So it's only these holes here that are for the metal inserts. That. Now these will only fit in one way. Uh, there's a small bevel, and this is the style you should get is there's a, uh, see if I can hold that up to the camera and get that focused, but there's a small little beveled end at the bottom here, whereas the other one's knurled. So we want to put the small beveled in into the hole. Now these are small, so they're going to go in really quick, so we need to be careful not to push them too far in. Just like that. I mean, it does not take much. Not a lot of force. These things get super hot and go in very easily. And that one was in a little further than I wanted because that's okay. There's a little extra melted plastic. Not a big deal. It'll it'll be hidden. It literally just takes a couple seconds. Okay, that one is done. If there's any plastic in the threads, you could use a tap to clean it out, or if you're lucky, it's just right at the top and you can get it out with a screwdriver. Generally, that's not an issue. Could happen, but it's generally not an issue. Okay. So if you notice these holes, they're bigger at the top here. If you flip it over, they're small, so they would these inserts wouldn't fit in there. So you know you, you don't want to put them in that direction. Okay. Okay. that one a little too far in but nothing horrible no nope, that's pretty close to the top I mean, it's not the end of the world if it goes a little too far in it's just hard to square them up if they're underneath the top of the plastic And square with, with them being square just makes it easier for assembly. That one was okay. okay, that piece is done. focus very well does it all right and the last four Okay. 
These you just want to make sure that your iron doesn't touch any of the edges. Melt the edges. Further down. Uh, yeah, I tried to go a little bit further down, went too far down, but that's still okay. These were still hot enough that you can manipulate them with the screwdriver. You want to go down as straight as possible. Tempted to push it down again with that, but that'll be too much. This will do it. Just like that. Okay. Alright, so now the nameplate just fits in here. As soon as I can. Okay. And then that's just going to be held in place with the LCD. Depending on your LCD, this may or may not be a good fit. If it's not a good fit, let me know and I can probably design one that's a little bit different so that it'll fit better. Okay, let's go ahead and set that aside. Now this is, if you're using an SD card extension, such as this one here, it's going to be held in with friction and then it's going to be a tight fit. It's going to go in this direction and you're going to push it all the way up to here pretty close to flush now you can do it sometimes it's easier to do it beforehand but i'm going to wait uh, but basically what this is going to do is in this bottom corner here let me see if i can get a good shot of that there's a little L that this just sits in, like this. All right, and then you're gonna, so it can be a little st tight depending on your printer's tolerance, but it should sit flush with this part. Okay. And then this is the, so if you're not going to use any of the USB ports, then this is just a plug here that slides in just like that to cover up the holes. Okay, just slides right into those two little slots and it covers all that up. Okay, so now we need to get the LCD screen and some screws. So, all right, LCD screen, nameplate is at the top, buttons are on the left, and it should fit in just like that. Now, this one has this one's a little, the nameplate's a little tall but it's not going to be too bad and it should be raised on the outside I don't know if you can see how it's raised but that's the way it should look if it's not raised up that much then that probably means I need to design a little bit taller one for your screen the, the quality control on these screens are a little iffy uh, I've seen some well, actually, I had, of the three, about one was a lot wider, and that's, and a lot taller than the other two. So I had to redesign this, the front piece a bit. Okay, so now the second piece is going to go, well, before I put that on, I'm going to use the extension. 
So the extension is going to go in here. And depending on your pie, if that slot is super loose, like a friend of mine had on his, then uh, we, might have, we might have to hot glue it in place. Hopefully not. So what I do is I'd start by taking and bending this over like this as close up as possible because we don't want it to hit the buttons or this edge. Okay. And then we're going to bend it up a little bit like that. So it looks kind of like that. And then we're going to insert this in, which is the tricky part. Insert it into the SD slot. Come on, SD slot. Okay. And then we want this, it's got to go underneath, underneath this, because the case is going to come down in front of it like that. Okay. In this particular installation, I'm not going to install the fan, uh, but I, I will later. So we start on this side, put this in here. And then it slides over the buttons like that and down. And over here on this side, there is a notch that these wires can go in. Sometimes they'll stay in the notch, sometimes they won't. It's not a big deal, but uh, it is there to help. If one wire sometimes wants to stick in, the others don't. Okay, so then it's like that. And now we need M25, or not M25, <laughs> that'd be a giant freaking screw. We need M3 times 25. Now, originally designed it with a button head, couldn't get button head, enough button heads quickly enough, so I got these flathead ones. So I made these holes, the inset's a little bit bigger. So we're going to put one in here. And okay, so I re what I recommend doing is cross corner. Don't tighten them all the way down, but they can be close. Okay, and that, and that. Now that one's not wanting to go in there because it's probably too far away. So squeeze it together. There we go. Don't tighten it too tight. You don't want to break, crack the screen or anything. I don't think you can really crack the screen, but no unnecessary pressure. I'm just hand. Finger tight. Okay, so that's that part. Now you got the power hole, the SD card slot here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out. I found it's usually easier without this in it. And it's sometimes it's tough to get it in and out. Try pulling up straight. If you're going to pull it out, don't pull it at an angle. You could wind up breaking it. Then you'd have to print another one. So I'm going to do that. All right, and then the hole goes where the power is. But I actually want to start at the other end because this little lip here slides underneath the connector to cover up the hole. And I just did it again. But actually, you can go like this, like that, and like that. Now the tricky part is finding, so we need four M3 times 30, and there's four there. 
tricky part is just finding where those little inserts are down at the bottom. So, uh, what I do is my screwdriver. There it is. It's one of those you set it down and you're like, where'd it go? So, if you push this all the way up against it, there we go. Now we found it. And I'll do this corner and I'll do this corner. Okay, and this is the tricky part because this is a tight fit and a lot of times when you're manipulating this cable it could come loose from the pie below in which case you're not going to have the SD card so you're just going to put it into that corner and push it all the way down and then you can push this SD card see now I'm hopefully I did not loosen that up I guess we'll find out when we turn it on but if you if it does if this cable does come out from the pie then you got to pull this off and you got to pull this off and you got to put it back in at which point you may just want to hot glue it in so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stop the video I'm gonna go get my power brick and SD card and we're going to test this before we get any further to make sure that that did not come out. So I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, the power brick I got sucks, so I won't be recommending it for anything. Uh, the main thing that sucks about it is the cords are so freaking short, it's not even funny. So we're gonna put the SD card in should click into place hopefully there's no friction on this you know don't don't go smacking it in just push it in and it should click into place all right and then we're going to put the power in and then we're going to turn the power on and then hopefully if you get a cursor up there, which I did, which I'm seeing right now, there's a tiny little, it's a little hard to see, but the cursor's there, that means it's booting. If you don't get that cursor, and you don't get that screen, then that means the SD card has been, the extender's been pulled out. Should boot up here any second now. There, you can get the cursor background and the emulator so we're going to see now that hmm yeah the screen they did a number on the screen here we're gonna have to there we go the bezels touching a little bit up here because of this screen that I got was a little bit off Go ahead and sh do a shutdown here. Bezel's off slightly because of the screen. But it was still, I could still get to it. If it becomes too much of an issue, I'll take a little bit off the top here. But there's going to be variances in these screens because the quality control really sucks. All right, so that's done. We know that the SD card works. So now at this point, if you had a fan, uh, you'd plug it. You would screw it into here. You'd use two of these trap nuts here. They're just square nuts. They're M3. It would slide in there, or if you wanted to, you could put in, it's designed so you could put metal inserts in there if you wanted. Uh, I use these because it's a lot easier. Uh, the fan I'm using is uh, this uh, Noctura, the NFA, 
four by ten. Uh, it's the only downside to this is you you open up the package. Package with the fan in it, hopefully. So you get the fan. But it comes with all this other stuff that you don't need. And unfortunately, I have not found a source. In fact, I'll go ahead and just install this fan. I think we're going to need two M3s. By eight. I think no, the the M three by eight is for the back cover, so I need four of those for that. The these the two for here are fourteens. Uh, Fourteen. Okay. Time to order more screws. M three fourteens. Okay, Take the fan out. Okay, there's two ways the fan can go in, and the fan airflow is through this direction and out that way. So you're gonna do it. You can do it depending on whether you cut the wires, which I've done in the past, or I'm, I'm going to try using the adapter on here, so I'm going to put it in this direction. So I need two of these. Well, actually, let's finish the other part. We can put these two screws in now that we know... Now that we know that the... SD card was okay. Finger tight. Doesn't have to, you don't have to crank on these things. Okay. Now for these I found it's easier if you drop them in like that. Then you hold it up. And then you use your thing here to center the, the holes like that. And then we're going to put the fan in. I don't know if you'll be able to see it from that angle. Like that. And then we're going to drop a screw in. Try to get it into that little nut. Nope. I see. I put it in upside down. There's a little bevel, so it's got to go this way. My mistake. See? Now you may be asking yourself, well, the wires are exposed to the fan, but so far I haven't seen any issue with that. I don't think the fan spins at a is powerful enough to even worry about. If push comes to shove, I can always design something to sit between the wires and the fan, but those wires are pretty stiff. They're not going to droop, and it's going to be... Uh, if it did hit the fan, I don't think the fan is powerful enough really to, to do much damage to those wires. Oop. See, that one shot out. Okay, so okay, I'm giving you a little bit of play on the on those so that uh, if there's a little bit of t variance in these nuts, then they should still work. Just takes a little bit. Okay. So now that's in there. And then this is just going to sit inside and you'll connect it up to this block. There's a 
in the past I've cut these off and just run in the wire, but they're actually the kit actually comes with an adapter right like that. Which we'll be able to put into that. So I said I wasn't gonna install the fan, but I guess I lied. strippers so this should go to here like that and then we're going to might as well get the full installation right just be careful not to strip too much off So plus five is on this end, ground is on this end. So let's go ahead and do the plus five first. We need a flathead screwdriver. Now you could just bypass all this and just solder this connector right to this thing, but I chose to do it this way. Gently tug, do not tug too hard, otherwise that will... Nope, I got that backwards. That would be bad. Plus five is at this end. Ground is at this end. Normally I'm looking at it from the other way. That's why I got it backwards. So always double check your work. Don't want to run negative five volts into a fan that wants five volts. Don't know what would happen. those wires over a little bit oh come on okay all right so now that's in there this wire is a little long so you'll probably have to do a little bit of folding you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab a zip tie. Since this is a new way of doing it, I'll grab a couple zip ties. zip tie these things together so that it makes it easier to stay out of the way improvising Now, if I need to t replace the fan or disconnect it for some reason, then it's just this disconnector here. Uh, and my cutters. Could use my zip tie gun, but just do this. Okay. All right, so now that I can just sit in there. Yeah, perfect. Okay, then the last piece to go on. There's a little notch here, which fits right up against that. Okay, we need to put the wires through that. Like, down like that. Still not liking that, is it? 
They should fit in that little notch. Come on, there we go. That way, we're flush. There we go. Now we need four of these. These are 3M by eight. All the sizes of everything is on the download for the case. Now, if it doesn't boot when I put all this together, that will be rather annoying. But it should boot. It booted before. Okay. That's it. We are assembled. Okay. Ta-da! All right. Smoke test. Turn that off. Power goes into the right. Power on. And I don't know if you can see the fan spinning or not. It's probably not. You probably can't. The fan is spinning. You can feel a little bit of air coming out. And it sets just like that. I'll probably design a stand so that you'll be able to you know, have it at an angle like this. But you can also use the visa mounts on the back uh, to mount it to pretty much anything that uh, supports that 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter stand. Okay, so we go to settings, full screen on that. Oop, that's not what I wanted. Cancel. Cancel. Settings, full screen. Come on. It is a small touch screen. All right, there we go. I don't care about the updates. I'm connected Wi-Fi wi wi via my network and therefore it wants updates. So we'll go ahead and hit power and it comes up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect this from my fluke. production pod here you can can't see it very well but that's okay untangle my cable here put the cable in yeah you gotta put it in the right direction okay cables in I don't know if you can see the green light on the pod. And then we're gonna well, we're gonna just set it like that and make it easier so it doesn't tip over. And then we're going to do a bus test. 
It says self test 6502 okay. So we're good to go. And we can go ahead and get out of full oop. Yeah, exit full screen. Do that. A little hard to do via the camera here. Shut down. Okay. And then once this screen goes away, then you should just be able to power it off. I mean, you can realistically, you can probably unplug it and it'll be fine. So that's off, and I'm just going to power it down. And that's it. So the cable goes in on the side. Let's see if we can do that. Plugs into the side like that. Your fans up top. Then you got the power plugs into here. And then the SD card. Just take it out. And then plug it back in. Just like that. And then you have access to all your touchscreen buttons if you need them. Uh, which, actually, I could probably use the touchscreen thing to move the screen down to adjust to accommodate the bezel we'll look into that later but that's uh pretty much it thanks for watching